hello to our viewers and welcome to BAI's deep dive on personalizing the customer experience. My name is Michael Haney, and I'm currently the head of Technosys' digital core business line for North America. I focus on our regional go-to-market and product strategies for the region. And I'm David Gibbard. I am the head of the Cyberbank digital platform. We're excited to be here and let's get on with the show. At Technosys, our mission is to make life easier for people by enabling the best experience in financial services. We aim to be the global leader in technology solutions for digital banking. We're leveraging over 25 years of continuous product innovation and extraordinary delivery service for our banking and fintech clients. You may know Technosys as the next generation banking software supplier to the Latin American market. There we've surpassed over 60 banking clients representing over 110 million active users of our platform. This includes not only fully digital banks like Banco Regional in Brazil, but also major players like Itaú and multinational powerhouses like HSBC and Santander. However, what you may not know is that over the last two years, we have entered the North American market. We have launched two new office locations in downtown Miami and Toronto and Canada. We have targeted this region as our next priority area for growth and are excited to share with you that our first few clients have gone live, both in the United States and in Canada on our platform with many more to come. Our platform is called Cyberbank. And with it, we focus today mainly on two key areas. Our customer engagement layer for digital banking is called Cyberbank Digital. With it, not only do we support the user experience across mobile, web, and other emerging channels, but we also provide the foundational layer to support process orchestration and third-party integrations. We complement Cyberbank Digital with our Cyberbank Core offering. Cyberbank Core, of course, houses customer and account details and processes daily transactions but it is also used to create new products and services in a no-code environment that we call Product Factory. We feel we are unique in the industry because we began the Technosys journey with the customer engagement layer and have always had the bank's customer at the heart of what we do. We quickly realized that we need to build a core processing system to complement our digital banking platform to, to solve the so-called two-speed architecture problem, which many banks face today. Their legacy core banking systems often can't provide the flexibility to adapt at the same speed that the typically newer front end systems enable today. This focus on time to market is what has driven Technus's overarching philosophy. And this philosophy is based on key industry trends, which we call the connected bank, the customizable bank, the conversational bank, and the insightful bank. The customizable bank focuses on three key areas. First, the increasing hyper-personalization of a bank's offerings to match the unique needs of the individual customers. Second, the desire of the banks to reach niche and often underserved customer segments. And lastly, the embrace of technology that focuses on configuration rather than coding or programming of new capabilities. Now let's move to the connected bank where it focuses on the trend that more and more banks are private labeling their business, often now called banking as a service. This is upending the banking industry. Smaller banks suddenly have distribution reach they could have never imagined previously in a branch banking world. Big tech firms like Google and Amazon are able to reach their enormous customer base with new offering, increasing already high loyalty and satisfaction rates. Traditional wholesale banks are able to support their community banking clients with completely new treasury and payment services. And of course, fintechs are able to reach niche customer segments with unique experiences and products that were previously viewed as unprofitable by the legacy banks. We at Technosys embrace this concept of open banking and base it on the three pillars of open API, open data, and open source. Next, we have the conversational bank. This is about embracing a type of artificial intelligence known as natural language processing to allow the customer to engage with their bank more naturally through speech and text. This is manifesting itself through digital channels such as smart speakers and chatbots in both human to human ways, as well as human to robot. And lastly, let's look at the insightful bank. Banks are increasingly capturing more and more information about their customers and their accounts, both at their own bank, as well as at other financial institution where the customer holds accounts. And this is allowing the bank to assist 
with the financial health of their clients by helping them to meet future goals, such as buying a home or retirement. And additionally, this data is allowing the banks to personalize their offerings to meet the needs and wants of clients more closely. And now I'll turn it over to David to demonstrate CyberBank in action. Enjoy. Hi, I'm here to introduce CyberBank Digital, our second generation. What makes CyberBank Digital different from our competitors and our previous generation is that our goal is to deliver a better customer experience. So how do we do that? We do that through driving financial wellness through contextual information and advice. And I'm gonna share with you some examples. So out of the box, we offer categorization. We offer insights and insights are based on current patterns, current trends and intelligent information. We offer financial advice as a result of those in insights and we're proactively engaging with the, with the end user. And most importantly, the system is intelligently learning as the user uses the system more and more. So how are we different than traditional uh, platforms? A traditional platform is very static. Our platform is self-learning. And what does that really mean? Well, it means that in a traditional solution, the user is pulling information, they're adding data, and there's a lot of work to getting, getting set up and being able to use the application. With our platform, it's self-learning, it's pushing information, it's doing automated data and analytics, and it's providing the end user with contextual insights and contextual advice in personalized bit-sized pieces. It takes a look at, at patterns and cash flow forecasts as opposed to looking uh, for information that, that the user has just input. So what makes this application so different is the ease of usability. There isn't a setup process. The setup process occurs throughout the interaction with the application. So what does that really mean? How do we go about this process of personalizing predictive analytics? Well, first of all, we wanna educate the consumer about financial wellness and savings. So we're trying to give them not a 101 course, but a gradual feeding of financial data to help them improve their, for their financial performance. Then what we do is we contextually suggest specific steps to increase savings, reduce debt, or improve financial outcomes. And then we initiate, and this is a key, automated actions to help the customer stick to that plan and their financial objectives. We automate the steps. There's not a whole setup process that goes. That makes the process simple for the end user and it ensures that they will begin to actually use the system as opposed to look at it. And then finally, we will provide ongoing feedback to the consumer and, and, and so they can realign their plans and goals based on where they are in, in, their, in their financial life cycle. So again, how does this all happen? Well, first of all, we get data. So what happened? So we will, we will, we will categorize transactions. We will do account aggregation. We basically take that data and say, okay, what's important from that data? And so important could be an unexpected payment came through, or your spending is higher than usual, or you have an insufficient balance, or you may have an insufficient balance based on the cash flow projections. So then what we do is we'll provide you with advice. How do you address those situations? How can you save more money? How can you pay off your debt? How do you start investing? And then it becomes automated. And again, that's the key, is the automation. It is easy for the end user to participate in the process. There is no start and finish. It's a, it's a longer term process based on that end user's goals and financial position. And that's what really makes our solution different than the marketplace. But there's also value to the bank. So not only are we providing value to the end user, but research shows that there's a 30% lift in customer satisfaction and net promoter scores of users that use this technology. There's a 40% increase in digital engagement, meaning those customers are going to be more loyal to your bank. And there's growth. We're seeing 15% in deposit and, and market share growth. All that 
is, is in addition to the consumer's benefits that they get from using the application. This is a cyberbank digital platform. So we showed you some, some contextual information. We showed you how we get and provide advice to the end user. We showed how the, there's bank value. Now I'm gonna show a couple of use cases uh, around personalization and contextual use of the system. So this is our web version of Cyberbank Digital. So we're going to log on and I'm going to log on here and password and jump right in. So the first thing that you'll come to is you will see we have our traditional account balance savings and information that, that most platforms have or all platforms have. There's nothing really exciting there. But what is, what is exciting is the insights that we provide at the very beginning. So as you get in, you can see that there's a carousel up top. And the first thing that you see is your cash flow position, both where you are this month, where you've been historically, and then where we're projecting you to be. So that information helps you as a, as a user understand your cash position and understand where you may have a shortfall. You can go through that. We'll provide additional contextual information. So for example, in this case, this user has a large usage of credit cards. And we know that from a FICO standpoint, that if someone is using more than 20% of their authorized limits, that negatively impacts their FICO score. And so we want the, the consumer to understand what their credit card balances are in relationship to their approved balances. So in this case, there you can see that they're close to a 50% utilization. Up here, that means this is an, an unhealthy number. If you click on that, we'll describe for you what that means and how to reduce that. If you're under 25%, you'll see that as being a healthy number and we'll explain why that's the case. We'll also provide you with an aggregated savings over time. And this is not just the savings in your savings account or the goals that you can see over here. This is your uh, uh, generic savings. So how much are you saving from one month to another month? In other words, did your overall cash balance go up or go down? So people have cash balances and savings accounts, but are you really staying ahead? Um, and so this will give you an aggregated picture of, from all your accounts that you've linked to the account, uh, what your savings position is and what your projected savings balances are to be. And finally, we will show you a spending analysis and you can click on the spending analysis and you will be able to deep dive into it. So you can select auto transportation and, and below that it will show you all the expenses associated with auto transportation, transfers, so on and so forth. And so you will see both what your spending was the previous month, what your spending is this month, and then what you're projected to spend next month. And so all these insights come out of the box and are on that first landing page where the user comes after login. Easy to get to, um, and, 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 and very informative. We'll also provide you with, with on the homepage, a, a insight that says, here's something that you need to be looking at. And I'll use an example, for example. So let's say that we're deep diving into spending and you're into a categorization. And all of a sudden it looks like each month that category is being spent, you're spending more and more on that, on that category. Let's just call it food and dining. So last month you spent, or two months ago, you spent 800, now you're up to 900. Next month you're at 1,000. That's, that's, that's an intelligent opportunity for the system to say, wait a second, do, do you really want to continue to spend that rate, that rate? And should we maybe set up a target? And if you say yes to that target, the system will automatically say, okay, we're gonna provide a target for food and dining, and, and it will suggest an amount, let's say $900. The user then has the ability to override that and say, no, I want that to be $800. So the targets look something like this. And so you will see down the list, all the targets that you've been set up. These targets are set up both uh, automated in an automated fashion through insights, but you also have the ability to add a target. You'll be able to see in real time where you are in that month for your target, and you'll be able to set alerts to that target. Now I can walk through and show you how to add a manual target, but I'm not sure that that's really important at this stage. Um, so targets is our form of budgeting. I don't know anybody that likes budgeting. 
except maybe my mom, bless her soul, but most people don't like budgeting. So this is a way to, to actively manage finances without budgeting and by making it a simple to engage process. The same thing for goals. You may have seen on our page here, we had goals and you can actually set up savings goals. That can be for a car, a vacation, and we'll go into the goals page. And so here's a list of all the goals that, that this user has set up. Again, you can do it manually and I can go through that, but I'm not sure there's a lot of value in seeing how to complete a form. The idea being here is that you have a, a dashboard that shows you exactly what your goal is, where you are in relationship to that goal, and, and the amount of contribution you should be contributing in order to meet that goal by your desired date. This is personalized, contextualized banking. This is CyberBank Digital 2 second generation. Thank you for joining us today. I hope you found this presentation useful. Technicis is here to help you with your journey through digitization.